stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. When Thomas Jefferson first laid eyes on this building, he wasn't happy. He is not pleased. The founding father and self-taught architect had designed the Virginia State Capitol while living 4,000 miles away. Jefferson is contacted in France. But when he got back to Richmond, he found his building had been enlarged, the offices were moved to the basement, and his grand front steps were eliminated. He comes back and he realizes there are no front steps. This was always intended, that there would be these magnificent front steps, that you would come up this hill, there would be this temple on the hilltop. A decade after Thomas Jefferson penned the Declaration of Independence, this building was sort of like his Declaration of Architectural Independence from Britain. You see, he never really liked the colonial architecture of Virginia. As an architect, it offended Jefferson's sense of style, and as a revolutionary, it clashed with his politics. This was, after all, Georgian architecture, a style imported from Britain and named for its kings. You know, even the name, Georgian architecture, it was horrible. Jefferson hated kings, and the Declaration of Independence is essentially his Dear John letter to George III. Jefferson was invited to create a new face for Virginia while he was serving as America's minister to France but he didn't find his architectural inspiration in the court of King Louis XVI. Instead, Jefferson looked back to the great classical buildings of Rome, which he knew so well from his architecture books. He liked the clean lines, he liked the symmetry, and this was his statement about the new nation being a part of the Western world, but not being beholden to Great Britain. But rather than simply borrow ideas from the ancients, Thomas Jefferson decided to do something unheard of. His state capital would be a copy of an actual Roman temple, the Maison Carré in the south of France. Jefferson writes somewhat lasciviously about his first face-to-face -face encounter with the temple. Here I am, gazing whole hours at the Maison Carré, like a lover at his mistress. And the reason why he picks the Maison Carré, the square building, is to embody ancient ideals of pure geometry. The Maison Carré is a one-room windowless temple, not an ideal vessel for state government. So, with the help of French architect Charles-Louis Clarisseau, Jefferson made a few practical changes. While the Maison Carré sported fancy Corinthian columns, he thought the workmen in Virginia could only handle simpler, ionic ones. Because the ionic orders are much easier to carve. And where in a Roman temple there might have been a statue of a god, Jefferson planned for a statue of America's first president. It looks remarkably different from the image of George Washington we all know. You know, I don't think that's the same likeness. In fact, this is considered the most accurate likeness we have of Washington. It was based on an actual mold of his face. He is not presented as a king. Notice that there is a missing button on the coat. There's a slight swelling to the belly, one <laughs> might say there. Jefferson may have been an ocean away in France, but he still tried to micromanage construction of the capital. He shipped this scale model back to Virginia, which remarkably survives today plus these obsessively detailed drawings. This was an obsessive individual with many different areas. <laughs> he sometimes would draw up his buildings with measurements down to one one-hundredth of an inch. Now, can you imagine a workman looking at that? It's likely that some of those workmen were slaves. Jefferson suggested that slaves work under the direction of an expert stonecutter. This is similar to the arrangement he used to build his home, Monticello. So this is something that he would have been very, very familiar with from his own experiences. But Thomas Jefferson's attempts to oversee the project from afar fell apart. His plans took months to reach Richmond. In the meantime, legislators grew impatient, and the builder broke ground on an entirely different design. Once the plans do get over here, they've already started the building. They've already got a foundation there. And that resulted in some of those troublesome changes to Jefferson's design, like leaving off his grand front steps, which wouldn't be added until after his death. Still, Jefferson's building would change American architecture. 
The Virginia State Capitol inspired American architects to use the classical temple form as the official face of this new nation. This was the first republic of the modern era to turn away from monarchy permanently. And this was radical, it was new, it was dangerous, and they announced all of this with Greco-Roman architecture.